Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is attorney Sharp Raleigh and we are going to discuss a little bit about the new STEM OPT, how it relates to to those students who are going to be working for consulting companies. First, before we even go there, uh, yesterday and uh, the USCIS updated, uh, not USCIS, the service updated the, um, the, the new service rule before uh, for uh, for DSOs, how they should treat the STEM OPT, and if you look at it here, uh, and I'm going to post uh, this uh, on my website that uh, that uh, it was issued on May fifth, and uh, a guidance on the 24 month extension, and it includes in special. Uh, actually, it's already posted on our website, and it includes uh, how to file and the kind of. Uh, what the, the designated school officials has to do uh, in order to really kind of uh, deal with the new STEM OPT and uh, this, the Form 983. The Form 983 is, uh, is, uh, is kind of the issue that we are facing right now and uh, the question that many are asking me is uh, how do my uh, consulting company deals with that uh, is this just a matter of filling the form and that will be good enough um, but um, that's not good enough that's the whole problem so we're going to analyze the two kinds of OPTs and how the 983 is uh, in the STEM OPT is going to affect uh, your ability as a STEM student or the employer to hire uh, the students uh, to work for them so for one if you have a 12 month OPT that's a Two OPTs is a 12 month and the new 24 month, and of course there are some rules. If you look at here, and they issued a, a also a guidance uh, for for uh, and that also I will post on our page uh, study in the U.S. on our website Pirali Law, where you will get uh, up to date information on the on the um, on what it calls uh, the STEM OPT and OPT and student visa. But here the main thing that we are going to look at is how will this affect you as an employee uh, under STEM OPT or how the employer should treat STEM OPT students. For one, uh, the issues uh, in, in compliance of the Form I-983 is very, very important. Remember, the reason we, we, we need to make sure this is done properly is because uh, we are seeing a crackdown on student visas and H-1B recently. UNNJ is a good example and also the H-1B people who got arrested in the Bay Area are other examples. So you need to be very careful when you're going to be employing as an employer and as a STEM OPT student you still have to make sure that your employer and you are compliant with all the rules because you can easily not only use lose your your STEM OPT but you can also end up uh, with uh, some kind of criminal charges uh, the reason there might be criminal charges because this the form 983 is an attestation it's almost like an affidavit and you're giving that to the USCIS and any willful misrepresentation can be construed as fraud and that can create a lot of problems for one, let us take, um, uh, we wrote this article yesterday on seven things consulting companies should consider in hiring OPT students and let us uh, dig completely into the new STEM OPT. Section 4, if you look at the form instructions, uh, employer certification signature on the 983 requires that a person will sign on the STEM OPT that they will not displace uh, any any other workers to replace them with STEM OPT. Very, very important fact. That means any workers who are on H-1B even or L-1 cannot be displaced to be replaced by STEM OPT. And uh, unfortunately, because the H-1B is a complicated um, uh, process, many people are just hire people on OPT uh, and uh, don't want to hire people on H-1B. And that's not a good idea because there might be some issues of displacement. However, the word displacement means basically removing the, the employees and putting a STEM OPT. But it can also be construed as uh, refusing to hire H-1Bs or L-1 or of course permanent residents and US citizen to place people under OPT. And that's a no-no. You need to be very careful because you're going to attest to that as an employer that you are not displacing anybody. So be very careful on that point. Second point, you have to adhere to the strict training plan. Um, the problem that we have, especially for consulting companies, because they are placement 
private companies they tend to place their their, their candidates um, in different different uh, places and the fact that uh, OPT uh, is more like a work permit people could really be mobile they could move in different directions they could actually uh, take a job here and another job another place without any problem but under the stem opt because there should be a, a training plan and a monitoring system uh, there might be some issues and issues that are, are very similar to the employer employee relationship uh, memo that new film memo that came out before where basically you have to prove you have uh, dominion over the employee but here is not dominion it's monitoring monitoring means basically controlling and uh, basically looking bas uh, on a day to day basis almost what the student is doing and if that relates to their um, to their area of uh, of uh, major um, w what they graduated in and what uh, what they really studied so that's another important factor you need to make sure you comply with as an employer and even as a as a student you need to make sure your employer is complying with that work site um, if the student is working for a branch uh, of a large entity or anywhere other than headquarters provide the name of this work site the exact address of the website stem practically practical training will take place. The reason they are asking for that is because they mentioned if you look at the the rules that was issued um, that they will be doing uh, on, a, on, a, on a regular basis they will come and do spot checking and works, work site checks. So be careful when you're mentioning you're working on one side you better make sure you are there. And if you're working in different sites you need to make sure you mention that too. And the other thing that is very important is naming the, the person who is in charge of monitoring the student. Um, what happens here is because this is a, a, a mentoring, almost monitoring mentoring program and the STEM OPT, you need to have one person who is basically almost dedicated to that. And that person should have at least a knowledge of what the student. For example, let's say someone is in a, is a software engineer, you might need another software engineer to monitor that. One of the solutions, of course, is to make sure, uh, in order for it to be profitable, probably you will have one person having four or five students they are monitoring at a place. So I I I. I I recommend that you make sure that this thing is uh, is uh, is met. So now the other thing that you you want to have is um, uh, not want to have you have to have is uh, the student role and the training uh, programs direct relationship to the qualifying STEM degree. That's what I was mentioning before. You ha it has to be related. You cannot, for example, take a STEM students and make them work on the um, to administrative work, things like that, and that will not achieve the goals and objectives. And you will be lying when you give that attestation. So be careful. The part which is the most dangerous is you attest to that and you don't give the information. You can really be punished for that. And we are seeing it happening, and it will happen over the years. So be careful when you're taking uh, when you're making those attestations goals and objectives of course you have to basically show that uh, there is a goal and objective that you want to reach by training the students and it's not your goals it's the goals of the uh, of the of the student so uh, remember it's not at the end of the, the day it's not you getting uh, labor it's the other way around that the labor is getting trained basically ultimately the goal is that those those people will go back to their home country and bring a knowledge to their home country although they of course they can do change of status etc employer oversight this is uh, this is where most of the IT consulting companies or consulting agencies will have a problem because they will have to have this supervisor who is constantly re basically um, watching the back of the students and making sure that they are compliant and uh, the, the, these people cannot be people who are you cannot just pick someone who is not in that industry to basically supervise and and uh, basically monitor those the work of the students and um, unfortunately small companies will have a big issue with that and uh, because that will require uh, an additional cost not only on the company but maybe on the end client uh, so 
Having said that, now if you look at all the, the, the elements there, I just covered few of them. There are a lot of other issues that will be related to that, which I recommend that you talk to a lawyer before you proceed. A lawyer who understands this, because this thing is so convoluted. Even me, who has done this for years now, it took me a while to really kind of figure out how to deal with this. So I recommend that you talk to a good lawyer who can help you on, on basically preparing those, those cases before you even take the OPT students. Uh, I mean the STEM OPT. The regular OPT is a little bit easier. But at this point then we will have to basically prepare a full package uh, just like we do on H1B cases, L1 cases before the student moves forward with you or on board with you. Make sure you're compliant. I, I repeat that. Make sure you're compliant. A single mistake will really cost you and we don't want this to happen. We have the service guide also here for, for DSOs and I think they are getting a, head, a headache too. But at the end of the day, the school wants to sell their student visa, so they need to comply. And they have all those those rules here. I posted that. I will post that too, probably a link in, in, in the same article. And, of course, the main thing we are talking about today is, uh, is, um, is of course, what, uh, how uh, uh, consulting agencies will deal with this STEM OPT. And uh, it's not impossible because it's there uh, it's something if you look at it you break it into into parts if you are compliant and you monitor it should be something that will be both helpful to your company and to the students make sure you're compliant and I thank you for listening anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided you should contact an attorney if you have any questions good luck to you thank you the number to our office 510-742-5887. Please subscribe to our channel. We will give you